So Vegas is coming back. It's exciting. Lots of great new things. And maybe some stuff that's not so great. Stay tuned. Vegas Tips and Tricks for Saturday, May 29, 2021. Today's program is called Mixed Blessings. The last few weeks we've been talking a lot about Vegas coming back. On June 1st, pretty much everything goes to 100% capacity. The few things that aren't already there. We're hearing about shows coming back. Cirque du Soleil and Blue Man Group. And, uh, you know, we're hearing about uh, buffets coming back. Bacchanal. Well, you know, we already have the buffet at Cosmopolitan. Who knows what else could be on the agenda? Hotels filling up, uh, you know, gambling revenues going through the roof. You know, even some conventions and concerts are starting to fill the calendar. But it's Vegas. And uh, today we're going to talk about some things that are coming back that... Uh, at best could be referred to as a mixed blessing. Okay, well, let's start out with uh, a big popular one from many years past, and that's paid parking. Yep, MGM is uh, announced and has over the last week and uh, will continue over the next few days to move all of their venues to a paid parking situation. Uh, they had been... Uh, free parking uh, since the outbreak uh, last uh, spring. Well, I guess since everything reopened again last summer. But uh, that's all going to be changed by June 1st. All of the venues should be paid once again. Cosmopolitan also will be paid parking June 1st. And uh, as always, there will likely be exceptions for, um, you know, high-end players, uh, maybe hotel guests. I haven't really read the details on those too much, but uh, paid parking is coming. Caesars has already had paid parking since last fall, but there have been a lot of ways to get around it, uh, whether you were a local or a hotel guest or a Caesars rewards man, uh, player member. Uh, you know, you could get around it and still can, but uh, that's liable to change as well. You know, we'll see if... Uh, some of the other strip casinos follow suit. A lot of the uh, sort of standalone properties had uh, continued to offer free parking, like uh, Venetian Palazzo. Uh, when Encore sort of backed off of their paid parking situation before the whole pandemic hit. So it will be interesting to see if they uh, sort of hold the line on the parking thing. And, and you know, facilities like Treasure Island and uh, Tropicana. They also had free parking and and still do, uh, so I you know I would expect probably uh, those properties will not move to a paid parking model at least not at this time. But there you go, paid parking is back. You know what else is back? Chris Angel's back. That's right, one of the most controversial stars in the Las Vegas constellation. He's been around for a long time. Some people love him and a lot of people don't, but. Uh, even with all the cutbacks in shows and venues that have been announced over the past few weeks, Mind Freak is not one of them. Chris Angel will be back uh, mind freaking each and every one of you starting July the 7th at Planet Hollywood. If you just can't get enough Chris in your life, he's back. You know what else is back? Something we thought we'd never see again. Something we dreamed we'd never see again. It's the Circus Circus Buffet, and it starts today. That's right. I thought they'd closed it down permanently. They were going to turn it into a food court, but suddenly an about face. The Circus Circus is now going to be available. A breakfast, brunch, and dinner. Uh, prices around the $20 to $25 mark. It varies a little bit uh, depending upon when you're there. 
um, and whether you're an adult or a child. I ate there some 25 years ago. At the time, it was kind of uh, a novelty, and uh, at that time, the, the sort of thing about most buffets was the price, so the idea that uh, this was like the cheapest buffet in town really drew me in. So if you really need food, the Circus Circus Buffet is available for your needs. Um, I assure you it is probably life-sustaining. Um, I believe the press release described it as something like delectable, and I am somewhat skeptical of that. Another thing we've been somewhat skeptical of for decades now is the return of some form of train service to Las Vegas, typically from somewhere in the Southern California area. There have been a couple proposals that have been bouncing around uh, semi-seriously over the last few years, um, still in process. But this week we got another player and a longtime player in the rail market, and that is the one and only Amtrak. Yes, it's America's passenger rail company. And uh, uh, under the Biden administration, there have been proposals to expand funding to Amtrak and allow them to operate some additional routes. One route they proposed this week was one that would travel from, uh, again, from the Los Angeles area to Las Vegas. Sounds kind of cool. It's supposed to take almost seven hours to get there which given the way some of you maniacs in Southern California drive is about twice as long as it takes you to drive there. I suspect it will be more expensive than driving or flying. Honestly, I might take it if I had the opportunity because I am a bit of a fan of train travel, but um, I can't see this really catching on beyond that sort of novelty uh, experience or, like I said, this sort of train um, fans out there. But, uh, you know, this is government money, and there seems to be a lot of that being conjured up nowadays. I give this thing at least a 50-50 chance of actually happening. So, there you go. It's coming. It might be a mixed blessing. Another mixed blessing we're once again talking about a baseball stadium in Las Vegas with a likely $1 billion price tag because we have that kind of money. The Oakland A's apparently trying to follow in the footsteps of their uh, former stadium mates, the Oakland Raiders who uh, just recently moved to Las Vegas, are also considering a move to Las Vegas. Team President Dave Cabal spent much of this past week in Southern Nevada, meeting with officials from Henderson, Las Vegas, Clark County. Uh, they are having trouble uh, getting a new stadium built where they are, and apparently uh, with the blessings of Major League Baseball are exploring possible um, destinations. Um, and apparently they're quite taken with Las Vegas, um, or at least the team president is. There had been some thoughts that uh, perhaps places like Portland or Montreal might be in the mix as well, but it appears that if there is a move that's going to happen, uh, it seems like maybe Las Vegas is the place. But again, where are they going to play, and uh, how are we going to spend a billion dollars? Now, um... One other thing that's been back to Vegas for the past uh, several months, I would say, already are the crowds and gambling receipts were through the roof last month. Um, outstanding, well over a billion dollars. Um, so the casinos are making money, which would suggest that uh, probably those uh, anecdotal reports that the machines are very tight are probably true. So, anyway, there's just a few things that might be coming back to Vegas that might be a mixed blessing. And, oh, there's one more that just opened the other day, and that was the monorail. We were talking about trains. The monorail is back. If you like walking all the way through a hotel casino out the back door and uh, down a platform to catch a train, that will then take you a few blocks in the other direction 
and then you can do that whole thing in reverse again, then uh, you are in business. Uh, I, I, of course, spoof the monorail a bit. There are situations where it's not a bad idea, particularly if you're uh, headed to the convention center um, or traveling all the way from the north to the south end of the strip. But for a lot of people, it's not necessarily the best transportation option, but it is, at least for now, available. It's back along with all the other things we just talked about. It's, uh, it's a mixed blessing, but we're happy that uh, we're seeing anything in Las Vegas. We sure weren't a year ago. Okay, everybody, speaking of things that are back, PJ's back again with another great cocktail. And uh, he's gonna say that I've given him a great introduction, uh, but we all know that's not really true, but uh, here he is. He's got kind of an interesting uh, take on a cocktail today. I think you'll probably enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy my mocktail. Oh, PJ mixes you up something a little stronger. Take it away. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Cocktail of the Week with your host, another professional bartender, PJ. Let's watch and see what fabulous cocktail PJ is whipping up for us today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. John, John, how you doing, buddy? Hey, did you get that brand new car? I know we were talking about it. Hopefully you did. Got one you liked. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Cocktail of the Week. And you know what? We're going to keep with that summertime theme. And we're going to make today's special cocktail. It's going to be... A martini, but not just any martini. It's going to be a bikini martini. That's right, a bikini martini. No, I will not be trying on a bikini. <laughs> a bikini? <laughs> I got to stop drinking before I do these shows. Anyhow, today it's going to be four ingredients. I am out of fresh lemons, so we're going to have to go with a little lemon juice concentrate. Also, we're going to do some gin, some blue curacao, some peach schnapps. So we're going to be making all that drink in my fine Elevated Craft shaker. All right, so is everybody ready? I know I am. I'm kind of looking forward to this cocktail. I've not had it before. I've seen it made by many, and now you're going to see it made by me. Let's get started, shall we? First thing we're going to do is make sure my lid's on tight. We're going to build this whole drink inside of this uh, craft uh, Elevated Craft shaker. Uh, what's cool about it is it's got all the measurements right in here. So I can just pour them one right after the other and then know exactly where I'm at. I've already got the ice in my uh, shaker. So first thing we're going to do is one and a half ounces of gin. Oops, let's get that around so I can, I can see where the ounces are. Hmm. <laughs> All right, here we go. One and a half ounces of gin. Half ounce of a blue a curacao. Just gonna take that right up to there. Half ounce of peach schnapps, which is about all I got left. And a half ounce, I can't read that, so we're going to bring in my trusty measuring cup. And a half ounce of lemon juice. Alrighty then, we'll be dumping that right into the shaker. Screw that puppy on like so. Let that sit for a moment, I'll do a little housekeeping. Where were we? Oh yes, let's shake this cocktail up, shall we? And here we go. Once again, the bar bikini, I can't say the word, bikini martini. The bikini martini. I did mention in the past that I am a non-professional bartender. <laughs> oh, 
Ah, uh, summertime. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I've been waiting for, if not all of you. John, you ready for this? A bikini martini, ladies and gentlemen. And I must say, I've got these deep, deep martini glasses. So it's not going to fill it up. <laughs> and uh, you would be hammered if it did fill it up. All right, let's put that aside. Let's bring in our little lemon garnish. Pop that on there. We're just going to float it. All right, we'll just float it. <laughs> little housekeeping. There we go. Man, ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure and my taste buds, John, you ready for this? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bikini Martini. Cheers, John. You know what? That's not bad. John, that's not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not too bad. Um, I think it's a perfect, perfect measurement. It's just you can taste a little bit of the gym, a little bit of blue curacao. You can taste a little bit of the peach schnapps, and you can uh, you can taste the lemon juice. That's good. That's a good cocktail, ladies and gentlemen. I highly suggest the bikini martini for all of you. So, but not until you do these things first. And that is, thumbs up, thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down twice. Of course, you'll get the thumbs up again. So let's do that. Also, leave a comment. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, leave comments. John answers all the comments. I go through and read the comments. Sometimes I answer some of them too, especially if you like my cocktail. And last but not least, what are we trying to do, ladies and gentlemen? Everybody, together? That's right, 10. Thousand subscribers for John's Vegas Tips and Tricks. Vegas Week is a great show. Cocktail of the Week. Great, great episode. 10,000 people. The best way to do that, tell 10 people. Or even better, quicker would be for all you 20,000 plus Facebook uh, fans. John, congratulations on that, by the way. Subscribe. It takes literally, boom, I'm subscribed that quick. That quick, all you gotta do is hit that button right there. This button, little red and white, red and white subscribe button. Hit that, painless, doesn't cost you a dime. Next thing we know, John's got 10,000 subscribers and he deserves every one of you all. You're gonna love the content. All right, I think I've babbled enough. John, back to you, ladies and gentlemen, yes? All right, John, back to you, sir. The bikini martini, don't do summer without it. Thank you for watching Vegas Weekly and Cocktails of the Week. Stay tuned for another fabulous cocktail coming up soon. Okay, PJ, thanks uh, once again. I know I was a little nervous when I saw a bikini martini. Uh, occasionally, PJ's uh, wardrobe choices are iffy. And uh, that one, uh, had, had to had to kind of screen that one to make sure it was uh, uh, acceptable for our audience, but uh, another another blue cocktail. Can't beat that. Hey, look, I'm wearing blue. How about that? Totally unintentional. We do not coordinate these things at all. There's really no coordination at all to, to me. Anyway, so, all right, so our classic Vegas tips and tricks continues today. And today's tip or trick is a real cop-out, but it's also a really good tip. You're watching me here on YouTube possibly because you're interested in learning more about Las Vegas. You've stumbled on this video. You're wondering, wow, how can I find out more? I mean, it's great to hear advice about Las Vegas and everything, but what's it really going to be like when I'm there? What's my room really going to be like? Well, you know what? Pretty much every hotel room that you're likely to choose from in Las Vegas 
there's a YouTube video or dozens of YouTube videos showing you around, showing you the features of those rooms, uh, what's there, what's not, uh, with many cases commentary on you know, whether the bed was comfortable, whether the place was noisy, uh, any and all sorts of information. So, you know, whether you're interested in finding out about a resort room at Bally's or a suite at the Wynn, just type in a good description of what you're looking for. I mean, clearly, if you uh, have booked a particular room, you can go to your reservation. It'll say exactly what that room is. And so just type that into the search button here on YouTube. And I'd give a pretty much a 95% chance there's a few reviews of it and some video. And then do make sure that when you look at that, uh, you look also look at the date because, you know, things if it's a review from like 10 years ago, things might be very different now than they were then. But it's not just rooms. Uh, you know, people gone to, you know, there's restaurant reviews that are very detailed. Uh, buffets are starting to come back. Uh, I mean, from I think the first night the Bacchanal Buffet was open, there must have been a dozen bloggers there uh, recording the event for posterity. So... You can check that out. Is it worth $65? Well, you can find out. If you're just curious about what it's going to be like to walk up and down the strip, there are strip walks all over the place. There are people walking through various casinos, walking through the Link Promenade, walking down Fremont Street. Literally hundreds, probably thousands of these videos. You know, when I started traveling on my own, you know, 30 odd years ago or so, I mean, you, you know, had to buy guidebooks and look at maps and, you know, Hopefully you could find some pictures somewhere that were good, but you didn't have anywhere near the resources that each and every one of you have right now, and it's absolutely free. So in addition, after you uh, hit subscribe and uh, join us uh, here on Vegas Tips and Tricks and on Vegas Weekly on a weekly basis, then go out there and uh, search for that specific information. Hey, I've made some of those videos. Maybe you'll see one of mine. So that's our Vegas tip of the week. A classic Vegas tip is to use this great free resource which you're watching here today. All right, so on uh, Wednesday, we will have a Wednesday show. It's going to be a very special Wednesday show. It's going to be leaving the apartment. It's going to be uh, tooling around, showing you some things, and uh, so it should be fun. So I hope you'll join us for that. And of course, I hope you'll join us once again next week for another episode of Vegas Weekly. Until then, I hope that you have a great, lucky, and healthy week. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.